Hi. Gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change it. He's straight. That's right. The Bible doesn't condemn gays. So, why do you? You know, we're living in the last time. There's some exciting things about ready to happen. And uh, part of that is we're going to get to see a whole bunch of people killed. Now, that sounds pretty terrible, but Jesus said he's going to return. And before he returns, he gives a little description. He, he tells us a few things about what to expect. Then he says that a quarter of the population of the world will be killed. And then a short time later, he says one third of the population will be killed. Well, when you do the math, that ends up being half of the world population killed in a 42 month period of time. So if we look at the, what the population of the world is, we'll say seven billion. We could say three and a half billion people are killed. <clears throat> now, a lot of people believe in pre-trib. Well, it's impossible to have a pre-trib. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the first resurrection because it says, uh, you know, count it good if you're not part of the second revelation, uh, uh, resurrection. See, the second re resurrection happens after the thousand year reign of Jesus when all the dead are raised at that time and then the books of life is open now if somehow during this thousand years or say after the rapture and then you finish the three and a half years uh, before Jesus returned then uh, you have a thousand years with Jesus well people die during that time and uh, well, at the end of that thousand years all those people that died are going to be raised from the dead and the books will be open, and the Book of Life, and, and uh, all the different books, and you will be judged accordingly. Uh, before the rapture, you have the opportunity to, to uh, hear, hear the calling of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus. But when you're drawn to Jesus, you can reject that calling, or you can accept what Jesus did on the cross, because Jesus came to Pay the price for your sin, and because um, you couldn't, uh, if you pay the price for yourself, sins, you would uh, die eternally. So the books are open there at the end of that thousand years coming up, and uh, it's uh, reviewed, and each person goes through that that has uh, died after the rapture, uh, and even those that are alive, and uh, there's it's checked out to see if you're in the uh, book of life and uh, <laughs> if you're not you're thrown in the lake of fire and if you are then you get a new spiritual body like everybody did in the rapture and the one that was in the first rising of the dead so how can the first rising of the dead be before the tribulation when we don't hear about the first rising of the dead until the Revelations chapter 20 and, and it talks about you know be glad you're in the first resurrection <clears throat> and uh, then you have to think a few things there's a bunch of people out there that basically would end up getting left behind even though they believed in Jesus we got hundred forty four thousand maybe Jews maybe a representative of you know, once you accept Jesus, you're grafted into the uh, olive tree. Uh, uh, you've got the natural olive branches, which is the biological Israel. And you've got the, the heathen, pagan, Gentile, whatever you want to call it. When they accept Jesus, they're, they're, they're now um, like wild olive branches. And they get grafted into that olive tree. The natural olive tree <clears throat> and um, so a lot of people and it's it seems you know it might be that the 144,000 does come from the very the 12 tribes of Israel and, and God's gonna seal them and everything but they're not gonna be unbelievers they're not gonna be just looking for the return of Messiah uh, that hasn't ever come yet they're, they're not uh, 
they're, they're not people that think that Jesus is not the Christ. They accepted Jesus. You're not going to be one of the 144 witnesses that you got sealed because you don't believe in Jesus. I know a lot of you might want to argue that point or whatever, but it just doesn't work that way. Same with the two witnesses. They're not going to sit there and be unbelievers and, and was wondering all the time. Then they saw the rapture. Then suddenly they say, oh, I guess it's true after all. And now they're such wonderful, faithful Christians that they can be do the mission of the two witnesses. The two witnesses have known Jesus for a while. And the 144,000 have gotten to know, know Jesus. So now you have to figure out how did they get left behind? Because we don't have any indication in the Bible anywhere that indicates that people will be left behind if they believe in Jesus. If you believe and you happen to die, then you will be raised first. And then we which remain and are alive that believe will be caught up and will meet the dead and Jesus with the living in the air. So, um, this is pretty significant um, to know that all people that believe will be raptured when the rapture takes place. You die, you won't be in the rapture because you're dead and you will be raised before the people that, that get raptured. And a lot of people want to somehow think because maybe uh, we're not uh, destined to the wrath of God or, or wrath. But, but man, we look at the past 2,000 years, we've been in lots of kinds of torment and pains and no doubt there's shakings involved. You can look at various events and see how God is doing some shaking. And, and now we're coming to the time where the big granddaddy of shakings of them all come and happen. And you're still going to be here. But the last three and a half years of the tribulation is called the wrath of God. Yet this is the period that Christians won't go through. There will be new Christians. I'm not sure that you're going to have a, a similar kind of name or anything. Because basically Christians accept Jesus. Well, and then when the resurrection, or when the rapture happens, the dead rise first. And then the living Christians are raised. Now after that, there's not going to be a Christian alive on earth. There's nobody ever in the whole planet earth is going to be a Christian for a moment of time. How long? I don't know. But for a moment of time, there will be no Christians dead or alive on earth. And then you got all the information. You know, the Christians been busy. Two witnesses been busy. 144,000 been busy. And on and on and on. I think there's even going to be some angels doing some witnessing. And, you know, God has his way of reaching the people after the rapture, in the time of his wrath. They will be people that believe the, whole, the Bible and basically believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, there's going to be a little bit different rules going on here because if you die, you're not going to wake up to the end of the thousand years. So if you die at the beginning of the last half of the three and a half years of the seven year period, then you're going to be 1,000 three and a half years before you're raised again. And you're not going to be raptured. You're not going to get a spiritual body. Uh, when you're raised, you have sort of a spiritual body. But you'll be in judgment. And the books will be open. So after the rapture, everybody that's alive then, plus all the people that died not in Christ before that time, will go before the judgment where the books are open and each individual will be judged according to their works and so forth. And there will be people that have accept the going 
something of those time basically it's probably going to be pretty much similar as today you believe that Jesus is there and that God sent him and, and so forth uh, but uh, those times will come and, and, and um, they will be people saved as it were at least saved enough to get in the, the thousand year reign we always have a choice Jesus won't forsake us he won't kick us out of his hand nobody can take us out of his hand the only way we can lose our salvation is if we reject Jesus and you can reject Jesus people do reject Jesus and as the times come and the shakings begin many Christians out there are gonna look at at uh, what's going on the two witness the 144,000 and a bunch of others they're going to be doing things and things are going to happen and a lot of Christians just not going to like it they think that man over there is a much better person to follow because he's a much nicer overall than it seems like that Jesus is and so lots of you people listening to me today are going to turn your back on Jesus because you don't like the way it ends up turning out to be you've forgotten all that that uh, those that love Jesus uh, I have not heard he has not seen the things that God has in store for them in other words after you get your spiritual body and it, it's, 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 oh, it's going to be pretty cool kind of thing we don't know what it is it's not going to be cloud it's not going to be just as like people want to say oh, it's just a paradise well it is sort of paradise but it's um, there's definitely going to be a work to do and uh, reigning with Jesus to do and what it means we can have a good imagination that's one thing God gave us a good imagination we look at the universe and whoa we got tons of places that we can really fill, fill all the nook and crannies and everything of things to do uh, and in the work of God as it were <coughs> but you, you can't you have to go through three and a half years to get to that Revelation chapter 20. You know, in Revelation 11, it says that, um, you know, because just the early part of it, we find out that the two witnesses uh, were killed and their body lay on the ground for three days. And everybody in the world can see them and they, they celebrate almost like Christmas, giving gifts to each other. And then they raise and they go up. It's a good possibility that, um, well, I think that the two witnesses are the last ones that need to die, that, that should die, that need to die. There'll be more people dying, no doubt, after they die. But the, the, there's only two people that need to die so that then the rapture can take place and the dead in Christ can raise. And no, that's the two witnesses. They're going to be the one that's the last one to die. And it's going to be the two witnesses. Then the, re the, the resurrection of the dead can happen. And it's probably a good likelihood or a possibility that when the two witnesses are raised, when they stand up before the whole earth on television or whatever it is, that they all see that there they are. They're um, standing up and... Um, then are raised. So that could be the time that the dead in Christ rise first. Because uh, so that's a distinct rising and it might simply be that's the time element when they raise, the dead's going to raise. Then we go to verse 18 of, of Revelation 11 and we get some interesting it says all the people related to what is the or has been called people of God in all sense of the manner of the word saints and on and on uh, if you want to just random Christians okay but it describes a whole batch of people that now get their reward. Well, we know that you get, get the reward when you're in the air with Jesus and the dead that rose first. So when you're reading the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 18, and it comes up 
do, the rewards are given to the saints, you have to know that you're in the air. And when you look around you, you see uh, all your relatives and, and all the other people that have died knowing Jesus and so forth. And there's Jesus. And he's dishing out the rewards to us. Now probably a bunch of us will want to give that rewards back. Uh, you know, we've got our crowns and all this kind of stuff. We might want to give our crowns back then because he is more worthy, you know. But, but the whole idea is that this is when all this kind of takes place. And this happens in Revelation 11. And what happens in Revelation 11 is that three billion people, three and a half billion people have been killed. So you look around you, the population of the world now is around three and a half billion. And there's another thing going on here. We're, we're, get, we're, we're, we're this, the angel is about ready to blow the seventh trumpet. And when that's done, the mystery of God is revealed. And that's told you, I think, in the previous chapter. And as these chapters somewhat overlay, but, but it says the seven angel blows, the mystery of God is revealed. Then it's up in, in, in the next chapter, it's going to say that the seventh angel is going to blow his trumpet. So the rapture is taking place at the time that the seventh angel blows the seventh trumpet. And uh, so we go up and get our reward. Well, the seventh trumpet is a long ways, uh, you know, in, in Thessalonians, is at the last trump. The people want to just try to try to invent a thing that God has some trumps, and one could be the, called the last trump. They go into Jewish history, customs, whatever, they could come up with something that kind of matches it. But we're talking here about now we're having the time when the saints are going to get the reward and the last trump is going to be blown in the mystery of uh, the seventh trump which is the last of the seven trump is going to be blown in the mystery of god is revealed what's the mystery of god well the salvation the dead and the living in christ are raised now you go into heaven we're all going to go in heaven when you accept jesus He's actually asking you to marry him, and he gives you an engagement ring. It's called the Holy Spirit, as a, another comforter. And uh, so we get married right after he gives the rewards out. We're, 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 we got our wedding gown. That's the whole purpose for the three and a half years, is, is to fit you so the wedding gowns will fit onto you. Because right now you're too fat. You got too much customs of men, traditions, and false doctrines and bigotry and all kinds of stuff that just make you so filthy no matter how good you are and the things you've done and you can and and, and god's uh, blessed you so many times because you know you're just a wonderful saint and everything you're still filthy rags to to god and you got to be cleaned up and when you die in christ death gates cleans you up that's a mystery in its own when you're living, you don't have the luxury of death gates, so you have to get cleaned up on earth. And that's the job of the two witnesses. Two witnesses isn't here just to rack havoc on Antichrist's kingdom. They're to get the church ready for eternity with Jesus Christ. You're going to get married to Jesus. When the rapture takes place, you need to be in your wedding gown. You cannot not have your wedding gown on. As soon as the rapture takes place, you're slipping into the wedding gown and it needs to fit and so the three and a half years makes it so that you have reduced your garbage off of your body until you can fit into the wedding gown so that once you got your rewards in the air you can get married and then you can go to the marriage supper of the lamb and uh, then you spend three and a half years of for, for various reasons, we can have a good imagination. Imagine we're getting uh, introduced to the things of heaven. We're, we're maybe getting uh, our mission sorted out because we got to come back with Jesus when He comes back and touch down on Mount of Olives. As we're going to reign with Him for a thousand years, we're going to only be in heaven for for the first three and a half years, and. Uh, we may be able to go back and forth. Don't know that, but not as well, it might be clear in some areas. But it's 
it says we're going to reign with him here on earth for a thousand years. And so we got some exciting times coming up and having a pre-trib doesn't fit. There's too many broken pieces. You have to invent so many things. It's like, like people that are evolutionists. You really got to have a, tons and tons and tons of faith. And it's so simple for them. They can add a million years. They can add a hundred million years and say, well, we don't have this phenomenon yet, but in a hundred million years, nature will make it happen. So we just attack on a hundred million years here and there. And we get, you know, little dinosaurs and tack on another few hundred million years, you know, 65 million years once they're gone. And, and we can have some humans popping up. Uh, you know, they have a really good imagination and, and very little fact to ba back, it up, back it up or something. And at least Christianity, uh, it's by faith for sure, but once you accept Jesus, once you believe in evolution, you're not going to have very many backups to it. It's still going to be a whole hard, cold, cut and dry, uh, completely bleak without any real results to show you anything. A few interesting discoveries, but at that, none of them show that evolution is, is uh, true, as it were. But once you accept Jesus, you pray the sinner's prayer, believing in him that God sent him, Jesus, and he, and he died on the cross, paying the price for your sin, and then God rose him on the third day, and you accept this, and you believe this is Jesus, that he's the Christ, then, Something else happens that doesn't happen to ev evolutionists. And that is you have a personal relation. You, you also have that comforter, you know, uh, your wedding ring, the Holy Spirit. So already you're feeling different and things are happening you don't understand. You wonder why you believe something that before you thought, how could you believe it? Nothing to prove anything. And so, um, you get things. You might, you might, something might be wrong with you and you get healed. You might have a financial need and, and it's met. Miracles happen and, and on and, and you have conversations with Jesus and, and dreams and, and lots of kind of things that happen once you accept Jesus. Evolutionary this doesn't get this kind of thing. But anyway, the time is coming and it's close at hand that we're going to enter the tribulation period. And Christians will be there, able to see three and a half billion, billion people killed. That's half the world, so you've got a 50-50 chance of dying, although big, huge pockets of the planet will die off and plump. Some, some areas, so other areas, maybe your 50-50 is not quite as that rate, but if in other areas, it's 100% toast. But, um, Anyway, hey, you know, if you don't know Jesus, why don't you accept him right now? You can turn to God right now. God, I believe you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. And that you rose him on the third day. Forgive me my sins and come into my life. A simple prayer like that gets you saved. Now there's more to it than that. you got to get to know this Jesus that you just accepted his... Uh, um, his, uh, when he kneeled down before you and said, will you marry me? Actually, is what happened. He gave you the wedding ring when you said yes, or the engagement ring when you said yes. Now, you need to get to know Jesus. And the way you do that is read the King James Bible. And um, that's how you get to know Jesus. I would start with the book of John and then go from there. Also, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, in fact, you can read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Although you have the Holy Spirit as another comforter, Jesus baptizing the Holy Spirit would give, induce you with power. You can make intercessory prayer in a language you never learned. Then you can have the gifts of the Spirit, and on and on and on. It's really a wonderful thing to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And healing is for today. You have pain any place, or even uh, for a relative. Put your hand on the spot in proxy for 
a friend or relative or yourself. Got your hand there? In the name of Jesus, be healed. Okay, I'll see you next week.